We'll call the uh, March 17, 2020 meeting of the Andalusia City Council together uh, in order and uh, ask uh, Councilman Ralph Wells if he will lead us in the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. everyone uh, to our second meeting in March uh, uh, this year and uh, welcome our guest. We always are happy to have guests with us and uh, invite anyone who has an interest in city government to come and be uh, our guest at our meetings. We meet on the first and third Tuesdays of each month, uh, usually with a workshop starting at five o'clock and then the regular session starting at six and uh, we, we will Keep, keep your ears open for that schedule for the next uh, couple of months because of, of the issues related to this uh, coronavirus. Things may change from, from t time to time, but we'll get, to, get the word out to everyone and try to help get everyone notified if there is a change. Uh, members of the council, you have before you the minutes of our March 6th meeting. We'll need a, a motion and a second to approve that, or if it needs corrections or modifications, we need that as well. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of our March 6th meeting. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. And that is unanimous, and I thank you for that. Okay, uh, under new business, we have ordinance 2020-01. Uh, this is a an ordinance that we took up at our last meeting. I had our first reading, and uh, I will uh, read through it real quickly because it has to do with FEMA, and I might want to make sure that I get it uh, stated correctly. Where is the City Council of the City of Andalusia desires to improve the quality of life for all its citizens and residents of surrounding areas? And where is the flood damage prevention ordinance of the City of Andalusia, Alabama, has not been updated since 2009? And whereas various definitions and language are now required by FEMA for the Alabama Department of Economic and Community Affairs Officer of Water Resources, Office of Water Resources, and whereas the City of Andalusia uh, and the City Council finds that it is in the best interest of the citizens of Andalusia to encourage responsible development that will minimize flood damage and that the attached ordinance will assist in accomplishing that goal of promoting the public health safety and general welfare of its citizenry. Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of uh, Andalusia, Alabama that Ordinance 2009-06 be repealed and that in its place the attached ordinance be adopted and that the ordinance, that the attached ordinance shall become effective immediately upon its adoption and publication as required by law. Uh, adopted and approved today's date. Uh, Members of the council, I recommend to you that we adopt this ordinance as something that's going to be required by FEMA. Uh, and if we expect to ever get any money from uh, ADECA to help us with any flood damage, we need to have our ordinance in line. So I, I recommend it to you. 
Mayor, I make a motion that we approve ordinance 2020-01 related to blood damage prevention. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Mount. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Sconyers. Is there any further discussion, questions, or comments? All in favor of adopting the ordinance, please indicate by raising your right hand. And that as well is unanimous, and I thank you so much for that. Our next item of business is Ordinance 2020-2, uh, which is declaring real property surplus. This is some property that is uh, related to the uh, to our uh, work with the uh, Andalus, uh, let me get the correct name, Covington. Covington Casket Operation. As you know, we are working with them. They're going to take that building that was built 15 years ago, so ago, and uh, and and put their operation out there. And this is property is owned by the IDB, the Industrial Development Board. Uh, the, the IDB has already approved this. It's going to be involved in a lease and a swap of property and, and, and some more work is going to be done on the building. Then uh, the Covenant Casket is going to enter into a, a long-term lease. And if you adopt uh, this ordinance, it will declare that eight acres of property that that building is sitting on is surplus, which we have to do before we can uh, alienate it. Uh, so that's what the ordinance will do. Now, is this a first reading of this? Okay. We can act on this tonight, but we'd have to have to suspend the rules, and I'm all for doing that if, if you want to move forward uh, on this tonight, or if you want to pass it to the next meeting, then we don't have to adopt, we don't have to suspend the rules. So does anybody have any heartburn about suspending the rules and moving forward with this? I don't know of any reason. We need, we need, we need to, we, we need to move forward, and th there's nothing in this that that does anything except suspend the rules on this. Right. Although the lease itself won't be taken up until the next meeting. Exactly. And we can do this as as a part of that. So okay. I, I I don't know of any urgency. Okay. No urgency. Then we'll we'll declare this then as a first reading, and we'll take that up at our next meeting. Uh, our next item is Resolution 2020, which is an application for a TAP grant for the area of property around Andalusia High School. That's an entire block. If y'all remember, this is the same TAP grant that we applied for a couple of years ago, and we were not successful in receiving it. And they said, hold off a year and reapply. And this is what this will do is to reapply for that grant, which is uh, will put a sidewalk around the entire block of uh, the high school and junior high school property and also will be uh, included in that will be an improvement of the street that turns in there on the back side of that property. All this is is an application for the seeking the grant. This is not anything beyond that, but we can't get we can't get the grant if we don't apply for it. So uh, we don't know what our chances are this year. Uh, we, maybe they're better than they were last time. So. John, is there anything that you wish to say about? Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll need a motion in a second to adopt that resolution. May I move to approve resolution 2020-07 on making application for the all tap Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I second. A second. Any further discussion? All in favor of approval, please indicate by raising the right hand. And that is carried, and thank you for that. We'll get that in. I think that's due like next month or something. Yep. Pretty 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 soon. But we've got it all. They our engineering firm has got all that put together and they're ready to go with it. So we'll we'll get that in. Uh, we have a guest with us tonight. Tonight has, has requested to uh, address us. Jennifer, would you like to Speak to the council. You, would you mind, yeah, just come down front. Hey, Mayor, I'm to time. My question is, uh, any, any help for the smaller businesses in the area? 
Thanks for the question. We we are we are fully aware of the economic uh, impact that this virus could have in our community and as, and as well as our state and nation, uh, and and we are examining everything we possibly can do to lighten that burden, and we are we're quite frankly waiting to see what the state and the federal government are going to do. They're talking about some pretty significant packages that might be available to small businesses. And of course, we're gonna work every way we can to help make that happen. I'm already talking to the, to, to the uh, members of the legislature. Uh, it's already being discussed. Of course, if you watch television at all, you see what's going on in the discussions in Washington about trying to put a package together to help small business pe people, and particularly restaurants uh, who, who depend on folks coming into businesses and, and being inside and eating food and being uh, the, the waitresses and waiters that depend on tips and all, the, all that stuff is being looked at by folks in, uh, at the state level and the federal level. And we're gonna do everything we, we can do to promote your business and everybody else's business in Andalusia. And in fact, I'm gonna read a statement here in a minute that, that relates directly to that. So. Rest assured, we, we are aware of the impact that this may have, uh, but it also will have an impact on us and, and our finances and our, what we have available to us to do anything with. So we don't really know what that's gonna be, what it's gonna amount to, but we're, we're watching it. And uh, we're, we're doing everything we can right now, so. One last question. Well, the, yeah, the, of course, the, the, the utility board operates the utility system, not the city council. We will be talking, we have a meeting Thursday with the, the uh, utility board, we'll be talking about that and what some things we might be able to help in that respect. So that's yet to be talked about and discussed and looked at, but we are doing that. Yes, yes ma'am, you're welcome. Okay, uh, there is a statement I would like to read uh, just uh, for the record, and hopefully folks watching will, uh, will hear some of this uh, as this broadcast out. Uh, at this time, we have no known cases of the Corona COVID-19 uh, virus in Covington County. Uh, there are 39 documented cases in Alabama as of this afternoon. Most of those cases are in North Alabama. With your cooperation and some of the steps we're going to talk about, we can keep our numbers low, hopefully. Number one, the first thing you can do is wash your hands often. The Centers for Disease Control suggests that you use soap and water and wash your hands at least for 20 seconds at the time. In other words, don't just stick them under the water and put, take them out and dry them. Put them under, under the water, wash them with soap, scrub them for 20 seconds. And do that four or five times in the morning, four or five times in the afternoon, four or five times at night. That will keep your uh, hands clean. I heard someone say today that he had scrubbed his hands so many times that he had, had discovered his uh, answers to his middle school test right there on his hands. <laughs> so I don't know if he wants to scrub them that much, but <laughs> washing your hands goes a long way uh, to one of the simple and easy things to do. Uh, keep your hands out of your face, away from your face because this, this uh, virus that we have is a touch. You have, to have, you have to touch the virus or it has to touch you. And it, it has, if you get it on your hands and you put your hands in your face, then it has access to your mouth, your nose, your eyes, and can invade your body that way. So try to 
keep your hands away from your face. Second thing is social dis distancing or staying a few feet away from each other. The recommended space to try to re uh, maintain between each other is six to eight feet. Now I know that's all, not always possible. You see, if you've ever watched the council meeting before, you know that we're in a different place tonight than we usually are. We're usually behind these desks up on the, up on the stage, but we're closer together up there than we, so we move these down here where we're more than six feet apart, just as an example of what we're talking about. Go that extra step to try to distance yourself from folks. Uh, stay out of crowded rooms. If there, is a, if there is a room, even a big room, if it's very crowded, try to stay out of that. Now, you know, at first we heard 500 people don't be in a group larger than 500 people. Now it's down to 250 in the state of Alabama. The president said this morning more than 10. So, you know, I don't know what that number, the correct number is, but use your best judgment. Try to stay out of crowded spaces. Uh, we have, the, the good thing about living in South Alabama and Andalusia and Covenant County is we have a lot of space. You know, we don't, we don't live on top of each other in crowded apartments, apartment buildings. We, most of us don't ride up and down elevators to go into and from our homes or our places to work. Uh, we don't, many of us ride in public uh, transportation. We don't have much public transportation in South Alabama. So we don't, we're, we're a lot different from New York City or Chicago or Los Angeles, obviously but particularly with respect to our spacing, how far apart we are. So we're very fortunate in that respect. The next thing is, if you're sick, stay home, unless you're going to get medical care. Uh, if you're sick, you're more susceptible to this virus. So uh, if, you're, if you're sick and you know you're sick, stay home. Uh, also, be good neighbors. Check on your neighbors, particularly if you have elderly folks nearby that uh, may need some help from time to time. Check on those folks. We all, Andalusia is a great place. We already got some great things going on here in response to this event. Uh, and it's because we're good neighbors and we care about each other. We love each other and we support each other. And that's what we want to do in this time. As far as the city of Andalusia is concerned, here are some of the actions that we're taking to protect our, our people. And when I say our people, I'm talking about everybody in the community. Because we are concerned about the health and welfare of our senior adults, the Adult Activity Center will be closed until, effect, uh, until further notice. We will, however, continue to operate the Senior Nutrition Center. Those seniors who normally have food delivered from the Nutrition Center will continue to receive those deliveries, okay? So if you're already getting uh, food delivered to your home, uh, that will continue. Meals also will be provided for those who normally dine in at the Adult Activity Center. They can be picked up weekdays from 11 o'clock until noon, uh, simply by driving through the drive-through at the Adult Activity Center. You won't have to get out of your car. There'll be somebody out there to, to uh, hand that food, uh, those meals to you. That being said, social inter interaction is important to senior adults, and we encourage our patrons to keep in touch and check on each other. Youth sports. Our, sports, our Department of Leisure Services announced on Friday that it will keep the same schedule that, as are our public schools. League practices will continue through Wednesday, March the 18th. At the end of the work day or the end of the practice day on March the 18th, practices will be suspended until Monday, April the 6th, and the parks will be closed. Okay, got that everybody? The parks will be closed. We simply do not have the manpower to keep park equipment sanitized. Now, if, if somebody wants to walk around the walking trail in Robinson Park, that's not what we're talking about. We, that's fine. We're talking about playing on the playground equipment and swings and that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and same thing at J.H. Johnson Park. The, those, those parts or the park will be closed. Uh, 
the library will follow the same schedule as the school system that we just that we just talked about. It, they will, it will close at five o'clock on Wednesday. That's tomorrow, five o'clock, and they will be will plan to reopen on Monday, April the sixth. Now, keep in mind, uh, those dates are subject to change depending on uh, where this uh, virus goes and the news related to it. They, those, those days may be extended, so stay tuned to your news, newspaper, uh, walk, get on our website, and you'll be able to follow what we're doing. Uh, I'm very proud that, uh, of the work our school system is doing. Uh, the school system, as we said, you, you've already heard, is, uh, is closing on uh, this Wednesday at uh, the close of school and will open Monday, April the 6th. That is the schedule now. But uh, the school system is, is working to provide meals and, and educational materials to our students. Our teachers have worked extra hours since school closings were announced to make sure students have materials to work at home with, regardless of whether or not they have access to the internet. We thank them for that. I'll also tell you that I have had a phone call with the uh, leaders of, at Mediacom, and they are working to try to provide uh, uh, internet access to people who may, maybe don't have it now. So uh, get, on, get on Mediacom. Uh, there's a, been an announcement made about that, uh, and we will try to get some information on our website uh, that sets that out for you. During uh, this time, the school will provide free meals to all children 18 years old and under, except for the five days that students would have been out for spring break. So spring break would have, start, would have started this coming Monday through Friday. So those five days, those meals will not be available because the school doesn't have those meals for those days because that would have been spring break. But there's going to be some other activity in the community to try to help alleviate uh, that, that uh, period of time when there will be meals available. Uh, basically, you can drive through or walk through to pick up these meals. Uh, there are to-go meals, and uh, the children must be present for the meals to be provided. In other words, adults can't drive through by themselves and get the meals. They gotta have the ch school children with them to establish that these meals are going to children, okay? Uh, these meals will be distributed at, at Head Start, which is on Seeger Street, the central office, which is the old middle school uh, on C.C. Baker Avenue, Johnson Park, uh, and which is uh, near Andalusia Estates, uh, old, the old gas station on River Falls Street, the, the, the old Cannon gas station, I guess is the best way to say that, and at the Andalusia Junior High School, which is at 401 8, uh, 4th Avenue, uh, 408 4th Avenue. We've also heard from organizers of Full Tummy, which is a charity that provides easy to prepare meals and snacks for children who might be at risk for hunger on, on the weekends. On Wednesday, Full Tummy will send home twice the normal amount of food in the backpacks to those children who regularly receive full tummy food for the weekend. So uh, thank you for all the volunteers uh, for full tummy. Small businesses. Uh, we, we always encourage our residents to shop locally, uh, buy locally, eat locally. But we are asking you to make an extra effort to support our small businesses during this time. We have already seen that the State Health Department closed some dining in restaurants in, and bars in some parts of North Alabama. We may get to that point here. We're not yet. Meanwhile, many of our restaurants have begun delivering or offering curbside service so that you can en still enjoy the convenience of not cooking. Remember, tip your servers as their incomes are being deeply hit by these limitations. Every time you purchase from a local retailer, you are making a difference in our community and in their lives and in their, in their employees' lives. Be good neighbors. Finally, I'd like to remind all of our residents to be good neighbors. Call and check on each other 
and help each other out. That's all I've got. Do we have anything from the council members? Hearing nothing, we will stand adjourned.